Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have a 9,000 Newton car that's been accelerated from zero velocity to a velocity of 20 meters per second in 5.6 seconds. Knowing that a horsepower is equal to 746 watts, what is the power required to accelerate this car to that speed in that amount of time? Well, of course, we're going to ignore it. We're going to ignore any internal resistance. We're going to ignore resistance between the car and the road and we're going to ignore any wind resistance. So, the pure power required to accelerate the car, ignoring all resistance. Well, let's see, how do we do that? Let's start with the definition of power. We can say that the power, by definition, is equal to work divided by time. How much work we've accomplished in a certain amount of time, and the time, of course, is given. And work by definition, well, work can be defined in two ways. We can say that work is equal to force times distance. Of course, we're not given the force, we're not given the distance, but work can also be defined as being the change in energy. And we are given that because in this case, we know that we start with a velocity of zero and we end up with a velocity of 20 meters per second. Knowing the mass of the car, we should be able to figure out the kinetic energy change of the car. So in other words, we can say that this is equal to the change in kinetic energy divided by the time that it took. And so starting from zero, the change would be the final kinetic energy. So this would be equal to one half mv squared. That's the final kinetic energy gained divided by the time. So now we're ready to plug in some numbers. The power is equal to one half times the mass. Well, the mass can be defined as the weight divided by g. So we're going to have to write this as weight divided by g times v squared. That would be the final velocity squared divided by time. So this becomes equal to 1 half times the weight, which is 9,000 newtons, divided by g, which is 9.8. Multiply that times the final velocity squared and divide the whole thing by the amount of time that it took, which is 5.6 seconds. All right, let's see what that is equal to. So 0.5 times 9,000 divided by 9.8 times 400 divided by 5.6. That gives us, uh, let's see here. Hmm, where's the decimal place? Ah, there it is, 32,000, let's call it 32,800. So the power required is equal to 32,800. Now, what are units for power? They are watts. Now, if you'd like to convert that to horsepower, we need the conversion factor. So we put horsepower at the top and watts at the bottom. So we can cancel out watts. And one horsepower is 746 watts. So let's go ahead and divide that by 746. That means we have just about 44 horsepower required to do that, 44 horsepower. Now again, that is without all the friction, internal friction, uh, deficiency of the engine and so forth, so obviously you'll need a much more powerful engine than that to do that, but just taking into account the power, the pure power required to accelerate a car, ignoring all resistance, 44 horsepower should do that. And that's how it's done. 